Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson six, rotations of 180 degrees. The first example here shows a picture of two lines, line L1 here with point P on it, and line L2 right here with point Q on it. They intersect and therefore form two angles, M and N. Actually, there's an angle here as well and here, but they're focusing on the M and N, and angles that are across from each other are called vertical angles. Okay, so what this is saying is the picture below shows what happens when there is a 180 degree rotation about the center O. So what they're saying is if I put a point here P and a point Q here, let me change colors, and I have a point Q, make that blue, okay, and I will put a point at O as my reference point, then if I click on them and I rotate them 180 degrees, um, now keep in mind that when I'm rotating, it's rotating about the center of my diagram, which is here. So I will need to move this dot back to O after I rotate it, just to give you an idea that after rotating 180 degrees, this point, if I rotated it about this point, it would not have moved. It would have rotated around like this, and that point would have stayed where it is. My point of rotation does not move. And as you can see, Q that I marked blue became Q prime, P that I marked green is now P prime, and angle M became N prime. So, or I'm sorry, M, angle M became angle N. Okay, the image N. Okay, so what, what, what does this mean? Okay, well, if the measure of angle M is 30 degrees, and I rotate it 180 degrees, and from prior lessons, and this one as well, we realize that the angle measure is preserved then the other angle is 30 degrees. And then I can finish my statement here. Vertical angles are congruent. And this is the symbol for congruent. An equal sign with a squiggly line over top. I can do better than that. R, my pen's not behaving today. There. Vertical angles are congruent, meaning they have the same angle measure. Okay, example two. The picture below shows what happens when there's a rotation 180 degrees around center O, so here's my center, the origin of the coordinate plane. So now we're going to rotate around the coordinate plane. So what they've done is, I will just trace this as best as I can without using a ruler just to save time. Um, we have a line segment AP, and we have another line segment PO. So if I connect those two, and rotate them 100 and oh they didn't connect there we go i rotate them 180 degrees about o which would put the end down here it ends up a became a prime p became p prime so this is a rotation of this angle down here now we already know from this prior example up here that the angle measures are preserved. So measure of angle APO is going to be congruent to the angle measure of A prime, P prime, O. The other thing that we're going to notice now that we are on a coordinate plane is that the ang that point P is a coordinate. And if I start at the origin and go left, one, two, three, four, that gives me an X value of negative four. And if I go up one, two, three, that gives me a Y value of positive three. So I'm at the point negative four, three. So I'm going to write that over here, negative four comma three. And that is my point P. And then I rotate it 180 degrees and I end up at P prime. So P prime, I'm going to put here. And P prime is at the point one, two, three, four. X is four. And y is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So that way we end up at a location and notice what happened. With our pre-image p, x was negative 4. We rotate it, we're at our image, x became positive 4. So the sign changed. 
at our pre-image point P, Y was positive three. Our image P prime, it became negative three when we rotated at 180 degrees. So that is a theorem that if we have a point A comma B and we rotate it 180 degrees, we get a negative A comma negative B for all numbers A and B. So if I look at A here, that is at the point negative one, two, three, four. A is negative four comma zero because it's on the x-axis. I didn't move up or down. And A prime is at one, two, three, four, zero. So A prime is at the point four comma zero. So the negative became positive and zero, there's no such thing as negative zero, zero just stayed zero. So if we just multiply our point by negative one, if I multiply this by negative one and I distribute, negative four times negative one is four and negative one times positive three is negative three. If I multiply this by negative one, negative one times negative four is positive four and negative one times zero is still zero. Exercises one through nine, we're just going to practice these now. See how you do, pause the video, come back, and then take a look at my solutions and see if you got the same outcome. So number one says, using your transparency, rotate the plane 180 degrees about the origin. So I don't have a transparency, but I can do this electronically. So there's the origin. And here's the point two comma negative four, or two comma negative four, and I will group them. And then I will rotate them 180 degrees and then move my point back to the origin can rotate it around the black dot that's at the origin. And now my point is up here and I'm going to write the coordinate and it's negative two comma positive four. So it went from two negative four to negative two positive four. Number two. Okay, this time we're going to rotate 180 degrees around the origin. So I'll put a dot at the origin. I have a point at negative three comma five, and it says without using your transparency, find the rotation of negative three five. Well, if I take my rule and I say negative three comma five, and I multiply both by negative one, negative one times negative three is positive three, and negative one times five is negative five. So I'm going to go over three to the right for my X and down five for my Y, and my point should be three comma negative five. Okay, so that was quick and easy without a rotation. Number three, we have a rotation 180 degrees around the origin. So I'm going to put a dot here. I'm going to need my ruler for this one because we also need to draw a straight line L, which is right here. And I'll do that in red as well. So there's L. Okay, move this down here. And it says, let L be the line passing through the point negative six, six, which is right here. So that's the point negative six comma six. Okay, so now I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees about L. Okay, so I've grouped them. I will choose my line. I'm going to rotate 180 degrees. Now keep in mind that red dot's got to go back to the origin because the way this rotates, it doesn't do it correctly. I need to move this back down to the origin now. So here's my 180 degree rotation. And notice my L is upside down now. So I'm just going to rename this. That's not there. I'm going to rename this L prime. Okay, so now where is my new point? And it, I start at the origin, count over one, two, three, four, five, six. So my X value is six, and my Y value is negative one, two, three, four, five, six, negative six. So I went from negative six, positive six, to positive six, negative six. And line L and L prime are parallel. Number four. It says let our let rotation O be a rotation 180 degrees around the origin. So I will put a dot at the origin. Let L be the line passing through the point seven comma zero. So now I need to make this vertical. 
come over here, draw a nice neat line at here, call it L, and I need to put a point at 7, 0, which is right here on the x-axis, over 7, up 0, okay? And now I'm going to group these, rotate 180 degrees, and see what happens. Okay, so now that I've grouped them, rotate 180 degrees. Now keep in mind my blue dot was at the origin, so I need to move that over here. So that'd be the actual true rotation around. And now my L is over here. And I'm going to change its name to L prime. And now my point is at negative 7, comma, 0. Okay, next question, number 5. 5 has, oh no, 5 doesn't. Next one. That rotation will be a rotation 180 degrees about the origin. So I'm going to put a dot at the origin. I need my ruler. I need to draw a straight line and call it L. And I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. And there is a point on it at the point over 0 up 2, which is on the y-axis right here. Here's the point 0, comma 2. And I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. So when I do that, rotate that 180 degrees and move this down here, okay, so now I have L prime. That's not going to be the name of this anymore. I'm going to rotate that. This was the point 0, 2. This is the new point over 0, down 2. So my new point is 0, comma, negative 2. And line L prime is parallel to line L, as well as the x-axis. Okay, so here is a misprint. It says, let rotation O be a rotation of 180 degrees around the origin. So I put a dot at the origin. Okay, and then we're going to draw a line L over here. And I'm going to draw this line L, name it L, move my ruler. Now here's where the problem is. So if, if you have your module, there is a misprint in your module. Please fix it or this will might confuse you. It says let L be the line passing through 4, 0. Well, we're over here. This is negative 4. So this should be negative 4, 0. That's a misprint in the module. Okay, so it's parallel to the y-axis. Is L parallel to the rotation of L? So what they're asking is, if we rotate this line L 180 degrees about the origin, so my origin has to get moved now. So my origin would have stayed right here. So this is the rotation. And we had a point at negative 4, 0. Now I have a point at 4, 0. Actually, it's not a misprint. My fault. They're calling that line. Let L be the line passing through 4, 0 parallel to the y-axis. It's asking, is L parallel to rotation of L? Um, so actually, yes, it is a misprint. So they're saying, is L, our original, parallel to the rotation of L, which would be L prime? So this should be negative 4, 0. And we are now at 4, 0. Okay. And the answer to this question is... Is L parallel to rotation L? And the answer is yes. And I'd say yes, line L is parallel to L prime, or L is parallel to L prime. Okay, number seven. Let R be a rotation about the origin. So put a dot at the origin. Let L be a line passing through the point zero, 1. So I need my ruler. Draw a line L. I'll make this one red. Call it L. Put the point 0, negative 1 is right here. Okay. Rotate 180 degrees to here. And the original point was here. That was the point 0, comma, negative 1. And now I have the point 0, comma, positive 1. And it says let L be passing through point 0, comma, negative 1. Rotate it. Now it's the image L prime is going through 0, comma, positive 1. 
And it says, is L parallel to rotation L? And the answer is also yes. So 180 degree rotations of lines create parallel lines. Unless the point of rotation is on the line, then the lines will coincide. So now we have a new example here. We have a line that's not parallel to X or Y. It is at an angle. So let me copy it. Okay, so it's about right there. That is called L. If we rotate it about the origin, what's going to happen? So they're asking, is L parallel to its rotation? So if I rotate this 180 degrees about the origin, move the origin back over here, what they're asking is, is L and my new L prime parallel? And the answer is yes. Okay, nine. Let R be a rotation 180 degrees about the center O. Is it parallel to the rotation L? Well, here we have a problem. They did not give us a coordinate plane. So the first thing I'm going to do, obviously, is copy this line because I need to rotate it. So I'm going to draw this line here. Okay, call it L, and we're going to rotate it. I need to rotate it about this point O. But if I do not have any other references beside this point, I can't figure out where 180 degrees is. So if you do not have a grid to determine where it ends up, you need to draw a line to determine your rotation. Because what's going to happen here is when you rotate line L about the point O on this green line, when you rotate a line that the rotation point is on the line, then you're going to get a, a line that coincides, which means it's on top of the original line. So if I copy all of these, rotate them 180 degrees, move my O back here. Actually, what I need to do to prove this is I need another line that doesn't get rotated to make sure my line lands on top. So if you're using a plastic sheet, you need to have drawn a line on the paper and on the plastic. Okay, so now I'm going to rotate everything that I grouped before. The red line is going to stay where it is, and I rotate it, but I don't know how to rotate it 180 degrees until I bring my point down here. So if I didn't have that line there, I wouldn't know where to stop. Okay, so now I gotta move this point so that the point and the line are right on top of each other. Okay, so I need to move this up to here. My point was off a little bit, I guess. Okay, so anyhow, there's the rotation of 180 degrees. So let me just fix this. These should have been all up here on O like that. Okay, so if I rotated it 180 degrees, it would have looked like this. And definitely L is parallel to L prime. And I'm going to write that this time, and I'm going to answer it. Okay, it says, is L parallel? And I'd say, I would say yes, comma, L is parallel to L prime. Okay, that is the end of lesson six. Go over your lesson summary and go do your problem set.